Hi guys, welcome back to Youth Online. My name is Miriam, and today I'm here with my fellow interns. Wow. So today, we'll be watching part two of Catching Feelings. But before we watch the skit, don't forget to share the link with your friends so they can watch as well. And without further ado, let us get into the skit. Hey dad. Hey, my boy. Hey, so dad, I just have something to ask you real quick. Um, mm -hmm. Because obviously, you know, it's Friday night, so yeah. I'm just obviously going to hang out with my friends now. At youth? Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I'm just, I just need some cash to hang out with my friends. You know how it is. Are they charging stuff at the youth program? No, no, of course not. So then? But uh, we're not going to youth tonight. Where are you going? I'm just, I'm just going out with my friends, you know. Which friends? Uh, just, you know, you know my, you know my friends, Dad. Who? Just... Dad, it's... Is know. Zach going to be there? Yeah. Yeah, he is. Call him. My boy. I, I don't know how to say this to you, mm. my boy. But in life, you have to, have to get to a place where you can stand on your own two feet. Mm. Friends will lead you here, they will lead you there. But you have to get to a place where you can stand on your own two feet. I'm not trying to say that you can't have friends. Mm. But you have to stop to try and fill this emptiness with friends. Auntie, every day now you have to be hanging out with these boys. Every, every day it's money for this, money for that. My boy, I understand that it's tough. Sometimes maybe you don't feel like you belong. Because, you know, since you've come to join our family, things have not always been easy. Mm. No, but it's, it's fine, Dad. It's not that. I promise. Colin, you, you, ha you have to take your faith seriously. When, when last did you read the Bible? No, was... When last have you prayed? Dad, uh... You see, this is, no, this is the thing that I'm talking about. I'm not wanting to get upset, Sonny, but mm. it, every day, it's just friends this, friends that, friends this. If you can't see that they're leading you astray, then I don't know what to say. But um, you can't fill that God gap that is in your heart mm -hmm. with people. No, I understand you, Dad. I promise. I'll, I'll do better, I promise. You know what? I'll go and get this money, and I just want you to think about what we've spoken about. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know that your mother and I, we love you. You are part of this family, okay? Thank you, Dad. I, have, I love you too, Dad, and thank you. I will, I will do my best to listen to what you say. No, I just want I you to connect with God. Mm. Try to read your Bible, pray, get stronger. I understand. It's fine, let me go and get this man. Thanks, Dad. Oh, hey, Miss M. Yeah, good seeing you too. Hey, dude, how are you? I'm good, man. What? I'm just are you ready? I'm, no, uh, listen, I'm just gonna stay here. And I'm just, what? What do you mean? I'm just Come here. on, We're, it's a party tonight. I'm just, I'm just gonna read. My Have you already tonight. forgotten? I just, nah, listen, are you, I just. What is that? I'm, what are I'm you doing? Here, are man. you the cash? Did you get it? No, I don't have. I don't have. It. I just, Why not? Because I'm gonna be. I'm just are you? Gonna read in my are mind. you forgetting us? No. What? I'm just. Are you? Just, not about have you that. replaced us now? Oh, listen, I just. Come on, so dude. Good. I made it special. Okay, it's fine. Hey. We can, we can, hey, that's the guy. Out, I know. We can go out just just tonight. Okay. Cool. One party won't hurt. Yeah. All right. So you got the cap? Yeah, of course. <laughs> So welcome back guys, uh, it's Spurge here. I wanna give a big shout out to Miriam, AKA Phils, uh, for doing the most. Give it up for, give it up for Miriam, guys. Hey, first time on here and, and um, it's good, man. So good to see our interns just growing. Big ups to them. I, I just wanna give them a shout out all the time because they're doing such good work. So big ups to you guys. Uh, 
You guys rock. Yeah, shout out to the internals. So uh, as uh, Miriam mentioned earlier on, we're doing part two of uh, the series. It's actually the last week that we're doing the series. It's called Catching Feelings. And really, we're looking at some aspects of relationships, not just romantic relationships, but relationships in general, but very, very useful for romantic relationships as well. Um, as to how we should treat people, some of the areas, some of the pitfalls we might have, uh, and if you guys remember, what did we speak about last week? Anyone want to tell me? What did we talk about last week? Come on, guys. What did we talk about last week? Talk about leaving, leaving people Big shout out to that. Leave a place better than you found it. And that phrase really just spoke to this idea that when we get into relationships with people, do they leave better off or worse off because they've known us. And uh, I'm not going to preach that message again. If you haven't heard it, go back to last week. I assure you it's good. It will challenge you and it'll get you to just look internally and really live in a way that pleases God. So this week, uh, our bottom line or our focus for this week is true happiness can only be found in God. True happiness can only be found in God. And last week we had a question, but this week it's more of a statement. And here's the statement is don't use people, and by people I'm talking about relationships, don't use people to try and fill the God gap. Do not use people to try and fill the God gap. And so today we're going to be focusing in on the life of a very, very interesting um, character in the Bible. Uh, he's known, simply known as the rich young ruler or the rich man, depending on um, the, the uh, what do you call it? The Bible version. Yes, the version that you're reading. I blank there for a moment. And so we're going to speak about him. And it comes from the book of Matthew chapter 19, verses 16 to 22. There's a bit more after that, which you can go and read, but I'm just going to zone in on those verses due to our time constraint. So verse 16 says this, someone came to Jesus with this question, teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? Why ask me about what is good? Jesus replied, there's only one who is good. But to answer your question, if you want to receive eternal life, keep the commandments. Which ones? The man asked. And Jesus replied, you must not murder, you must not commit adultery, you must not steal, you must not testify falsely, honor your mother and your father, love your neighbor as yourself. Um, then he says, this is the guy responding, he says, I've obeyed all these commandments. The young man replied, what else must I do? So he's saying, man, I've reached that standard. What else do you have for me, Jesus? Hit me. And uh, Jesus, oh, Jesus hit him, all right, as he often does with so many people. So Jesus says this to him, if you want to be perfect, because Jesus is not dumb, he can actually sense that this guy, in a weird sense, is implying that he's got it, like he's figured all, it all out. And he says to him, if you want to be perfect, go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. But when the young man heard this, the Bible says he went away sad for he had many possessions. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you again that we get to be here tonight. We get to study your word. And I pray that as your word, as, as we study your word, that your word would study us, would study our hearts. And as we're talking about relationships, that you would help us to learn to move in relationships in a way that pleases you. As we said last week, we need you to help us to leave people, relationships better than what we found them. May people be blessed for having known us and not the opposite. In Jesus' name I pray and I ask this. Amen. 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 Awesome. So are you guys ready? Yeah, cool. So uh, it says this, um, that when Jesus spoke to this young guy and told him what he needed to do to be perfect, he left pretty sad. 
and sadness is not happiness. He clearly was in a pursuit for that fulfillment, for that happiness. But I want to drive home our bottom line for today again. Help me out, interns. True happiness can only be found in God. Help me out. True happiness can only be found in God. God, shout out to you guys. Just took you guys back to Kids Church. Um, <laughs> so I, I want to go to one of the verses and show you something very interesting here. So verse 21 says this. Jesus told him, if you want to be perfect, so if this is truly your desire, go and sell everything you own, your possessions, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. Right. Now, the... The, the very interesting thing I find about this is if you were to study scripture, what you realize is many times, in fact, I'll give you one time, uh, where there was a demon-possessed guy, and Jesus healed this guy. It says he had a legion of demons, so quite a lot of demons that had possessed him. And Jesus healed him, and after Jesus healed him, this man wanted to follow Jesus. He actually wanted to give up everything he had. Not that he had much going for him, but uh, he wanted to give up the chains, and essentially go after Jesus. He said, hey man, I'm leaving the jewelry behind. I want to come after you, Lord Jesus. And Jesus actually said to this guy, no, 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 no. You go back to your town, man. Go, go and make a difference there. So for me, when I read this portion of scripture, I found it extremely interesting. Because it's, it seems that it wasn't always that Jesus would say to people, yeah, come follow me. Um, in a literal sense, like leave your home and and that kind of thing. He did it with some, but other times he didn't do it. So I watched the scripture verse and I wondered to myself, why did Jesus say to the one, don't follow me, but why does he say to the rich young ruler, sell everything and follow me? I think he did that because he knew something about the rich young ruler that most of us might miss reading the story. Jesus knew his heart. He knew some of the areas of struggle. The truth is, there are areas in our lives where we have struggled. There are areas in our lives where, what can I say, we're not yet mature. We're still working through stuff. So Jesus understood that this guy probably loved the soft life that he was living. So Jesus challenges him. He says, hey, give this treasure up and I'll give you treasure in heaven, essentially. And um, we all know how he responded to that. But before I get to that, here's a point that I want to drive home from that. Is um, even though Jesus, I believe, was testing this young man, it was more than just Jesus testing this young man. He was actually trying to open his eyes to a reality that many of us often miss. And that reality is this, that the God gap can and will only be filled by God. The God gap can only be filled by God. It is what it is. You can cry, you can get upset about that, but the God gap will only be filled by God. And I say that to drive home this point, that oftentimes when we start catching feelings, what we do is we try to take people and get people to fill in the God gap. I think it was last week that we were reading the Bible. Actually, it wasn't last week. It was two weeks ago that I was doing a lecture with the interns. Uh, wait, it was last week. Goodness. I was doing an, uh, a lecture with the interns, and we are looking at Scripture, and I was just studying how to understand the Bible better. And one of the things we learned looking at the Bible is that grace comes from God, mercy comes from God, and peace comes from God. Isn't it true that sometimes when you get into relationships, we try to actually replace that task and we try to get our girlfriends to give us grace. We try to get our boyfriends to give us mercy. I get into a relationship because I want to be peaceful. I'm tired of being alone. I'm tired of my life feeling messed up. And here's the problem. Is when we try to take relationships or people and use them to fill up the God gap, all that happens is that people will disappoint you. But it's unfair for you to expect them not to. Because it's not their position, their gap to fill anyway. Now I'll give you a practical example that explains this idea just a bit more. Ever had that feeling where you were in a relationship with somebody, might be romantic, might be a friendship relationship, and you were going through the most. And so you say to them, hey, Malawi, can we hang out? And he says, I pull up. 
So I go to Colin's place and we hang out. And I begin to just vomit all these feelings out. I said to me, and then I was fighting with Miriam and she said this and she upset me. And can you believe she would do something like this? And man, I can't believe this. I just want to punch her in the face. Not me because I'm a guy, but not that it would be okay for a girl to punch her in the face either. But you get the gist, right? I'm upset. I'm livid. And Colin doesn't give me the response that I was expecting. He's like, oh, well, yo, that's tough, bro. That's tough, bro. Yo, dude, my, my parents are on the verge of a divorce. Yo, I'm sorry about that. Isn't it true that when we're in relationships with people, that happens so many times, where we feel like people aren't, they don't give us enough of what we need. Bro, I needed a shoulder to cry on, and you just gave me a, yo, hardy, bro. Am I trying to suggest that we can't have friendships or relationships with people where we support each other and we're there for each other? No, that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is people are not God. They will never be God. They will never be able to fill in the God gap. Do you know those days where you feel inadequate in life? Where you wish you had certain things that you don't have? Where you feel kind of insecure? You know what I'm talking about? People won't bring about that security it only comes from god i remind you our bottom line for today is that true happiness and i would even substitute that word with fulfillment true happiness slash fulfillment can only 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 be found in god in fact let me say this that when we find god and we find our fulfillment in god it actually brings more fulfillment from our relationships. See, if your girlfriend or your best friend isn't your source of peace, then when you hang out with them, you can be a little bit more at peace. Because when I'm sad, it's not my girlfriend's job to remove my sadness or my insecurity. But they are a support system on top of what is my only source, which is God. So when Jesus spoke to this young man, he said to him, Bro, if you want to be perfect, you got to get rid of the possessions. you got to get rid of the money. And only then will you find real treasure. Only then will you find fulfillment if you follow me. It wasn't actually about the money. It wasn't actually about his possessions. Jesus was trying to open his eyes to the real fulfillment in life, which comes from our God gap being filled. But if we go to verse 22, it says, the young man, after hearing this, left. He went away sad. And the Bible gives us a reason for his sadness. The Bible says that he left after Jesus made this proposal to him. And he left being sad because... He had a lot of possessions. He had a lot of possessions. But I've said this before because I honestly believe it is, I don't think the young ruler had a lot of possessions. I think a lot of possessions had him. They actually had his heart. Leads me to the second thing that I want to say is, we, if we want to learn how to find true fulfillment in God, um, we have got to learn to possess and not be possessed. Right? It's like if you buy a great pair of shoes, uh, you've got to learn that the shoes are what you wear. They shouldn't wear you. You know what I'm saying? I shouldn't begin finding my identity in the price tag of my shoe or, or, or the brand of my shoe. Sometimes you've got to wear a couple of fake shoes every now and then. You know what I'm saying? Like, listen, it is what it... Sometimes the budget... Sometimes you're on, like, fake, bu fake shoe budget. Like, you know what I mean? Sometimes you can get some expensive kicks. Let's learn to possess and not be possessed. Remember, if true happiness can only be found in God, then we have got to learn not to use people to try and fill the God gap. 
because it actually drains people. And just like I said last week, when, when we do that and when we expect all of that from people, we actually leave them worse than what we have found them. True happiness, friends, true fulfillment can only be found in God. He went away sad, the rich young ruler, for he had many possessions. I think he left because he thought, gosh, if I sell everything I've got and I get rid of my possessions, it will change my lifestyle. I mean, hey, listen, Jesus, I love you and I don't mind following you, but what do you travel in again? Wait, you guys eat where? I don't mind to bring my money. I can pay for everybody to eat, but wait. You're telling me I should get rid of what I have to live your kind of lifestyle. Wait, what? You're asking me to dump who? You're asking me to leave which friend? The truth is, we get like that sometimes. We've become so dependent on certain relationships, right? That the idea of leaving them for God literally saddens us. So wait, 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 what are you saying, Yesh? I should quit blazing with these friends or hang out with these friends. Sometimes it's not even negative context. Sometimes it's just a romantic relationship. Like you know it's bad for you because it literally steals every ounce of time you have. You know since you started dating that person, your prayer life has gone from hero to zero. Sort of hero to definitely zero. I want to challenge somebody today to say, I think we have to be bold enough. Now is the time. Better now in your youth than when you're much older someday. Because it gets tougher to let go of people when you're older. But better now that we would look God in the eyes and say, Lord, hit me. Just like you hit that uh, rich young ruler, hit me, hit me. What needs to go? What needs to go? What is stealing your, your position? What am, I, what am I using to try and fill that gap? I know that in my own life, there are so many things that, that God is just trying to weed out of my life, helping me to just let them go. To go, yes, you don't need that. You actually don't need that. You think you do, but you really don't. But I want to close off by saying this, that it doesn't matter who we let go of. It doesn't matter what we let go of. Until we realize our desperate need for Jesus in relationship to begin with. It's one thing to let go of something. But it's easier to let go of something knowing how much better the thing you're going for is. See, we'll never be excited to let go of toxic relationships until we realize how beautiful Jesus is to relate with. We'll never be okay with letting go of stuff certain lifestyles, certain things in our lives until we realize how amazing God is to behold, to have, to relate with. So right now, on that note, I want to speak to somebody that does not have a relationship with God. It starts there for you. I'm not necessarily suggesting you leave this message and in your own strength, try to decide, okay, do I keep this friend? Colin, stay or go? Go. Oh, and stay or go. That's not what I'm saying. You know, I'm not saying be legalistic about this. But it starts with actually saying, God, before I even let go, I want to I follow you. And whatever doesn't go with you, help me to see and to let it go. So it starts off with you accepting Jesus into your life as your Savior, as your Lord, meaning the leader of your life, not just some token guy in the group who has no say, but he becomes the leader of your life. He actually guides your everyday steps. And if that's you, and if you're saying, yes, I want to make that decision, I will challenge you, as I often do, to drop us a message on Instagram or on WhatsApp where we can follow up with you and pray with you and actually help you to take these new steps, your next steps on this new journey. And to anybody that's was watching this me message that's saying, I know I need to let go of some things, the truth is you can't do it by yourself. You need God to help you in that. 
And we also want to help you in that. So also be bold enough, drop us a, mix, a message, and we will get in touch with you. We will pray with you and help you take that step. But for now, I will pray for you, and I will trust that the Holy Spirit will continue the work that he's begun in your heart. Um, so Lord Jesus, we come before you. For the first group, those that want to start a relationship with you, I bring them before you, and I pray that you would just help them in making this decision, making this jump, uh, make them bold enough to reach out and help us to help them take the next step. I, I pray that you would help them, as your word says, to believe it in their hearts and to confess it with their tongues that Jesus Christ is Lord, that you are their Savior, that they would place their trust in you. And Lord, secondly, for, for those of us that are praying and asking, Lord, help us, help us, help us to be uh, better at this, letting go of that which does not align with you. Uh, I pray that you would do exactly that, that you would help us, that you would grow us. In your name, I pray and ask. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Such a privilege to be here with you guys. Thank you so much for joining us for this series. We will be back, not next week, but the week following, because uh, this coming weekend is Easter. And I want to encourage you guys to book for in-person um, services, if you can, for the, our Easter services. That's Good Friday. Good Friday and Easter Sunday. You can do that. Uh, there's a link. Either message us at youth uh, on our WhatsApp line or go to our Instagram. That's teens under, underscore church alive. And you'll find the booking link in our uh, bio. And that link is the same for youth meetings as well. So you can book for the youth meeting, not next week, but the week after for in person if you want to come and hang out with us. If you don't, then uh, we'll still find you online. Remember, catch feelings, but treat people good. Don't expect them to fill the God gap and leave them better than you found them. I hope you guys have been blessed by the last two weeks. Remember, uh, it's still available online, so share it with a friend. It might change somebody's life. See you guys on Friday. See you guys on Sunday. See you guys on Good Friday. See you guys on Easter Sunday. See you guys that week at... Uh, uh, youth again. Until then, it's been a vibe from me and the interns. Peace.